Hey, welcome to another Orbiter 2010 video. And again, this is a continuation of the Mars to Jupiter learn with me that I'm doing. And I'm back here at that save point. I want to take a, I want to take all everything that I've learned so far and see if I can actually get to IO. So let's go ahead and see if we can solve that problem. I'm going to target IO, and again I'm going to try to set my periapsis at uh, this altitude. And I want to also see if I can bring my inclination closer to that of IO so that I don't have to do that once I'm over, once I'm in orbit around I, uh, Jupiter. If I take her the inclination out here, it will it'll be much cheaper in terms of fuel usage. So let's bring up a line plane. Let's target IO. And it uh, looks like we're at a node right now. So let's go orbit normal. see there with just a few taps of main engine able to get ourselves basically in plane much closer let's go back to prograde Let's rotate outward. Let's raise our periapsis out to 350,000 kilometers. Try to keep the vessel rotated right there at 90. There's 350. Okay, now let's uh, plan on moving ahead toward Jupiter. Let me bring up Transex real quick. I'm just going to see if I can start setting up my plan for getting to IO now. Cuz I in the last test I think I kind of proved, you know, proof of concept that that doing it this way should work. So the earlier I plan this, the better. Okay, so there we got that side on Okay. Let's be the IO encounter here. Turn maneuver mode on. Let me think about this for a second. Because I don't want to do a maneuver yet, obviously. I need to get.
reset that. <clears throat> I think outward. Okay, so that's bringing the closest approach down quite well, but that's 300. Three hundred worth of delta v. Let's see what happens if I reset the this and use prograde instead. <clears throat> okay, that's a lot more. So let's go back to outward. <clears throat> about right there maybe yeah we're pretty close now let's put in a little bit of plane change yeah there we go that has us basically running right into IO and that's basically what we want but that's continuing to come down can see the minimum altitude so let's make it so that we're saying we're going to come up a little high that's going the wrong way that's continuing to increase Okay, we'll just go with that. That's got us down to a kilometer, and it's continuing to go up as we get in closer, but we'll uh, make adjustments as necessary. This isn't going to be... Well, now it's going down. And the reason this is going to change continually is because Jupiter has so many moons around it that the gravitational... Uh, the, the number of bodies that are going to have an impact on the gravitational model is changing constantly so we're probably not going to be able to get any more accurate than that so let's go to view target translation rotation and we want to rotate uh, let me think here so we're putting in a little bit of cha plane change and the other variable was outward and it's negative outward, so we're going to want to go mainly minus 90. Trying to take the guesswork out of how to work the rotation so that the green X gets close to center. way and there we have it and I might have wanted to have bumped the date a little bit forward but I didn't really think about it hopefully we're still far enough away from Jupiter that it won't matter translation that. I'll view over to maneuver. 
off. And we'll view the target, or view the encounter on this side. Turn Prairie off. And now let's get over to Jupiter. Just kind of keeping an eye on the minimum altitude here. Would like it to stay pretty low. I'm, a lot, I'm not real sure when I'm going to have to do my braking burn. So I'm... Rotation. Translation. Because there's a couple of different things going on here. I need to slow down before I get to Io so that I can you know, get into a parking orbit around Jupiter, but I'll just have to figure it out as I go. I'm winging it. Get in a little closer. Let's go ahead and do another maneuver now. Bring the external MFD back up. <clears throat> View the encounter on that side and do the maneuver on this side. go ahead and bump the date forward this time. What I'll do is right now the date is 3200 so I'm going to bump it to 3300 that'll give me 14 minutes. See right there that's 3300 that's 14 minutes from now. So I've got 14 minutes to set this up and then I can warp time ahead to get to the time to actually do the burn. So let's start with a little bit of outward here. And that's going the wrong way. <coughs> you can see it coming down here now. see if we can get any more benefit out of plane change. Let's take away a little bit of outward. Okay. Alright, let's go with that. Rotation. So again, we're mostly going negative outward, I believe, and some plane change. So 270. Plus a little bit this way. Okay, there we are. Now let me bump time ahead so that we can begin the burn. Okay, I'm getting pretty close. Beginning the burn in. 15 seconds. Translation.
new remote off. I'm just going to set that NFD to the side because I'm probably going to bring it back up a few more times. And let's continue warping time forward. And there's our target planet, or target moon, rather. Continuing to warp time ahead here. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, so we're going to come well inside the orbit of Io, and then we're going to rendezvous with Io on the opposite side. Now, how is that going to work? That'll be okay. It'll be okay. So I'm not going to actually do any kind of deceleration at Jupiter's periapsis because if I do that, it'll mess up my timing for getting over to Io. So I'm going to sling around Jupiter here. Well, sling around isn't really the right word, but go around Jupiter. And when I get over here to this point, which will be over here, that's when I will actually begin the deceleration around Jupiter so it'll be it won't be a perfect retrograde burn it'll be a combination of retrograde and outward I'm gonna actually press control s at this point to save right here where I'm at because there's a good chance this is gonna there's a good chance I'll mess something up here so All right, well, there's nothing to do at this point but warp time ahead until I'm over here. Though I do want to kind of watch my closest approach at Io. All right, let me do one more correction here. Okay, that's the encounter. Got maneuver on this side, turn maneuver mode on. And we just want to make sure that our encounter is closer than 12,000 kilometers. That's not real close. And again, I'm going to go forward, make it 7220. Actually, let me just make it. 71, 72, that'll give me seven minutes. That's close enough right there. Seven minutes will be enough. All right, let's work with outward again. Okay, that's bringing the closest approach down. Ouch, 120. Right, let's see if uh, let's see if prograde's cheaper. Okay, 
Nope, it's more expensive, so back to outward. Okay, now that we've got the minimum altitude at that point, let's see what happens if we get incorporate a little bit of plane change. Okay, looks like right there we're, it's saying that we're in plane, so let's go back to outward. Okay, we'll go with that. That's a really low number and it's continuing to go up, although with all the moons moving around, who knows what will actually be the outcome there. So let's go with this. I'm going to set that aside for now. Got view target up. Rotation. And I believe it was negative outwards, so we need to go minus 90. some plane change, so we need to go this way. Okay, I'm going to warp time ahead for about four minutes. <coughs> And uh, we've got a pretty good burn here, 300, close to 300 worth of Delta V. Translation. Actually, not even sure how you could really plan. Hang on, let me finish this burn. I was gonna say I'm not even really sure how you could plan this burn or plan this encounter with IO with a lot of precision because the uh, MFDs they just don't have enough. They just don't take enough things into account. Uh, like Transex, for example, it's a two-body math model in Jupiter. I mean, how many moons does it have? You would have to have like a, you know, 30 body math model MFD for this to be even remotely accurate. Anyway, maneuver mode off. Bring this back over so we can see it. We've still got a little ways to go until we're going to be at the projected encounter for for IO. But the, the, what I'm going through in my head here is I can't wait until I'm all the way at IO to begin the burn to slow myself down because if I do, my my thinking is I'm going to sling right past it. So somewhere before I get to IO. I have to begin inserting myself into an orbit around Jupiter 
but I can't do it too soon because then I'll come up short of IO. You know what I mean? Let me control S again right at this point. Let's go forward a ways more because we've still got to at least go around Jupiter to get over here. Let me rotate up a little Rotation. bit. So we can see Jupiter. At least enjoy the view while we're here, right? Okay, we're coming around Jupiter's uh, far side. Minimum altitude here is holding pretty well. Okay, we are not too far away from IO. 57148-0094, we're really close to that point. So, let's actually see if we can figure out where IO's at. Let me set that aside for now. Okay. Now I think what I need to do. All right. Oh boy. It's a lot going on right now. Let me reference IO. Okay, I'm twenty one thousand kilometers away from IO. Now let me bring up Attitude MFD. Let me target actually a target relative. Let me target IO. So this gives me all my directions of movement relative to IO. And what I want to do is rotate the vessel so that 100% of the uh, difference in velocity is relative to my forward movement. I'll show you what I mean. See, as I pitch up there, <clears throat> you can see the vertical gets close to zero. That's what I want. Yeah, it's really close to zero now. I want my lateral. I want all this to be transferred to forward aft. Like that. Okay, that's a bit more. Okay, basically right there, I have 100%, my, my vessel is facing in the exact direction of movement, but now I can't do a retrograde, or I can't do a, I can't use retro engines, I don't believe, I, I'm certain I can't, so now I need to rotate the vessel 180 degrees, 
this way. So that all that forward aft becomes negative. I can turn that off, I don't need it. Right about there. So basically now when I do a main engine burn, this number is going to get closer to zero and that's what I want. Now the question is, how much time will it take to eliminate that much velocity? And I don't know. So let's use burn time calculator to figure it out. So I want to put in dv 16. Sixteen five six zero. And it's going to take about 808 seconds to burn that much. And the distance is about 7,500. Altitude is 17,000. From This is from IO. It's my altitude from IO. So if I'm reading this right, then when my altitude is 7,000 kilometers, that's when I need to begin the burn. All right, let's pray I'm right. Control S. Let me warp time ahead till my altitude is at 7,000. At basically this number. As I'm closing in, let me let me just bring up another external MFD because I'm going to be going back and forth otherwise. Let me bring up attitude. Make sure this number isn't changing significantly. Do a little bit more rotation here to get the vertical and lateral closer to zero. So 16.54, still really close to what we have here. So when we're at an altitude of 7,500 kilometers, then we'll begin this burn. And that's basically saying that we should stop, we should have eliminated all of our velocity by the time we get to IO. We'll see. Of course, come to think of it, I don't want to eliminate all of my velocity. God, what am I doing? Yeah, I don't want to eliminate all my velocity because I still need to be in orbit around Jupiter. So if I start the burn 
at this time. It's going to be a little too soon. gonna go with this number anyway and we'll just see what happens. I saved it a minute ago so okay altitudes at 8,000 okay we're almost there 756 basically is what we're looking for burning. So here's what we're doing. There's IO behind us. We're approaching IO and we're doing a main engine burn to slow ourselves down. And you can see here with the uh, attitude MFD, it's telling me what my speed is relative to IO. Let me bring this MFD up also. Make it a little smaller. Translation. Rotation. What I can do also is maybe do a little bit of rotation to bring the minimum altitude down. And I don't know if I'll have enough fuel for this burn. from IO is 8,000. Of course, that's from the center. Alright, this burn's going to take a while. It's warp time ahead. Not going to have enough fuel. A distance from the center of IO is this number. Our forward aft is this number. Minimum altitude's coming down. In fact, I might actually want to rotate a little bit so that that's. not coming down so rapidly. See the minimum altitude here. There we've got it under control, so we're basically saying the minimum altitude will be 51 kilometers. That sounds reasonable to me. I actually don't know how big IO is, if it's like comparable to the moon or what it is. Not gonna have enough fuel though. Gosh darn it. Morning. Main fuel low. System reset. 
I'm gonna cheat and give myself extra fuel because I really want to be able to at least complete this and land on IO. I'll redo it another time and do it better, but for now, I've come all this way. I want to be able to complete this. So let me set these aside. We have the payload editor. I'm just going to give myself like another 30% should do it, I think. Alright, now let's see how things are coming along. Okay, we still got quite a bit to burn through here. Sorry about the cheat, but in order to do this mission right, I've got to start all the way back over at Mars, and at, at the very least, I'd like to land on Io, which I've never done before. So I'm continuing to warp time ahead now, so that, and I've got a minimum altitude issue here I need to do. Translation. Here. Rotation. That's the wrong way. There we go. Okay, minimum altitudes under control. Okay, about 3,000 more of Delta V. having to rotate quite a bit just to keep the minimum altitude from dropping down to a negative number so I don't crash into IO. We can see the orbit starting to close in slowly. Okay, we are captured by IO, sweet. Now it should just be a matter of circularizing the orbit. Uh, let's 
go with that for now. All right. <clears throat> We're in orbit around Io. Nice. We're almost out of fuel. All right. I don't think I need attitude MFD anymore, so let me just close it out. Let's go prograde to Io. Uh, actually. Periapsis is an issue. It's uh, negative. That's not good. So let's address that. Translation. Rotation. Okay, so coming around to periapsis, I need to burn outward. I don't have a base on Iode to choose. At least I don't think I do. Let me check. Yeah, no, I don't have any base for Io, so I'm just going to have to land wherever. I should have downloaded some kind of base that I wasn't, I wasn't thinking about it. Okay, so let me bring my periapsis up to like zero. And we'll just plan on landing when we get over here. Translation. Rotation. Okay. Oops. Now, what is my velocity here relative to Io? It's only 1,500, so basically the same as the moon, a little bit less. And I can only assume that periapsis continues to change because of the pole of Jupiter. So in order to have a stable periapsis, I'd probably have to bring it up to, you know, some relatively high number, but I'm not going to do that because I plan to land. And I don't know what kind of atmosphere Io has, but it won't really matter because we're going so slow. Alright, this is cool, man. I love doing brand new stuff. It's just, it's pretty exciting. Okay, so I'm warping time ahead. I guess I don't really even have to worry about my periapsis because I'm going to land, so when I get close to the surface I'll just use hover to offset whatever vertical descent I have anyway. And it's going back up now anyway, probably because the pole of Jupiter is going a different way. Okay, so we're 600 seconds away, 10 minutes away from periapsis. Let's go... Retrograde. And this much velocity is not going to take long to eliminate. But we don't have to guess. Can put in that number. 1925. And it says it'll be a 91 second burn. Or about 89 kilometers. We're 342 seconds away from periapsis. Let's go forward a little bit more. We're basically looking at 91 seconds. That's when we'll start the burn. Um, let's go ahead and bring up the surface. And 
buttons for rotate this way so that we can use the uh, hover engines as needed. <clears throat> 240 seconds so it's warp time ahead okay. let's go ahead and engage the attitude hold and keep ourselves level yeah, pitch. Okay. Five thousand. Go ahead and warp time ahead now to we're at ninety one seconds. Four thousand. About there. And burning. Going to eliminate all this velocity and hopefully uh, land on IO. I don't need this anymore. Do need to kind of watch our vertical speed here a little bit. 3,000. Let's go ahead and input a little bit of hover to keep our vertical speed under control. Outside. <clears throat> Fact, what I can do. Warning: re-entry check failed. Oops. Actually, engage the descent hold. That'll keep me at zero for now. Okay, we're at seven hundred. Coming down, we're almost. Uh, Almost eliminated all the forward velocity. So let's get our warning. Main fuel low. System reset. Let's get a little bit of de descent going on. basically very close to a dead stop. Now we're just going to hover down. In fact, just engage auto land at this point. Let's go ahead and lower the landing gear. 2000. Gear down. Translation gear down locked. You are clear to land. Still have some velocity f in some direction. I'm just not sure which direction it's coming from. Uh, One thousand nine hundred eight hundred seven hundred six hundred five hundred four hundred three hundred. Oh, it's all vertical. Okay. Two hundred. One hundred. Uh, made it. Seventy-five. Very satisfying. Fifty. I just 40, wish I had a base. 30, 20, 15, 10, 8, 6, 4, 3, 2, 1. Wheels down. Wheels down. Nice. Alright, let's, uh... Disengage. APU offline. What do we have? APU burning? Oh. offline. Still have some hover for some reason. Wheels up. Wheels APU down. Offline. 
hmm, apparently the gravitational pull of Io is so slight that we're going to do this bouncy thing that we do on Phobos. You see, if, uh, usually if you use the brakes, gotta turn the APU on them for brakes, it'll kind of stop, get wheel stop. Rotation translation. Wheel stop. There we go, now we got wheel stop. And turn on external cooling. Using external O2. External cooling online. Very, very nice. Very bland course because I don't have a base, but all right, that was cool. I guess I just needed like one more fuel module, maybe two. But again, if I had planned it right from the get-go, then I wouldn't have needed the extra fuel for that landing for that braking burn at IO. I'm just going through in my head here any last moment or last minute thoughts that I want to share before I stop the video. I've learned a lot in this in this flight though. Hopefully you were able to follow the thought process there when I was coming around Jupiter and getting over to IO and bringing up attitude MFD. Um, I don't there might be another way to do that. There might be another MFD that would be better for that. But off the top of my head, I don't know what it is, and I'm pretty comfortable with Attitude MFD. I understand how it works, so I, I've used it several times. I used it when I did the uh, Mars to Phobos and Phobos to Deimos. Um, but yeah, I mean, that is that is totally a, a viable way to get over to Io. Uh, when you get out to Jupiter, just plan on arriving at Jupiter with an orbital altitude out to, you know, 350,000 kilometers, that'll give you a nice high orbit, and it won't require, you know, a, a, a ridiculous amount of fuel to get uh, into orbit around Jupiter at that point, and then, of course, you can rendezvous with Io, or as I did, you can make that part of your uh, plan, when, you know, as you're coming into Jupiter, which is probably more fuel efficient, rather than, you know, getting into orbit first and then transitioning to getting a rendezvous with Io, although I think that would actually probably be a little bit easier if you broke it up into two steps, but I don't think it would be as fuel efficient. So, all right, that's cool. I guess that's going to end this uh, Learn With Me. I com I've done what I wanted to do, you know, get all the way to Jupiter and land on one of the moons. That was the goal from the uh, from the beginning, so I've accomplished that. So uh, I think I'm definitely going to end this Learn With Me this time. I've said I was going to end it like three times now, but pretty sure this is finally it. I'm going to do another one of these. Um, obviously, I'm going to do many more, but I'm going to do another one that's going to be kind of similar, and I've already started planning it, and I've actually taken what I've learned from this one in order to plan the next one. And I don't know when I'm going to do it, so I don't know if it's going to be number two or number three, but the what I'm going to do in one of them is I'm going to take off from Mars, I'm also going to use the Vanguard, and I'm going to land on Phobos to pick up a lot of fuel, because part of the problem with taking off from Mars is that you, you burn a lot of fuel just getting up off the planet, as we saw in this Learn With Me. So instead of loading the vessel down with fuel while I'm on Mars, I'm just going to have a very light load, take off from Mars, go over to Phobos, and at Phobos, I've already got it set up, where I've got a lot of fuel modules, so I'm going to land there, and I've got a specific target that I've got to find on Phobos in order to get those fuel modules. So I'll land on Phobos, get all the fuel and locks. By the way, I've got locks, modules, and fuel mod payload on Phobos. I'll pick those up, and then from there, I'm going to go to Saturn. And from when I get to Saturn, I'm going to land on probably Titan. I think I said that right. 
and I'll take what I've learned from this flight and apply it to that one. So I'm not going to bother trying to do atmospheric braking at Saturn. Um, although I, I actually may, like, as a side quest, I may try to do a little bit of atmospheric braking at Saturn because Saturn's a much smaller gas giant. It's still huge, but it's much smaller than Jupiter. So atmospheric braking might be pro might be possible at Saturn. But basically, I will plan on getting into a nice high orbit around Saturn and then, you know, transitioning to uh, probably Titan is what I'm thinking. So, um, again, I don't know when I'll get around to doing that. Hopefully it won't be too long, but that's going to be the idea. So, I got to say I loved doing this. This was a lot of fun, figuring this out and finally having some success getting here at IO, even though I had to cheat and use a little bit of extra fuel was still great. But I really hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed making it. And sorry I'm rambling so long. I just get yeah, in a chatty mood, I guess. But I'll go ahead and wrap it up. Uh, you know, if you liked it, comment down below, as I always say. And then I will see you next time.